Hey guys, today we're taking a look at all four of the Republic gunships that have been made at minifigure scale. Now I do have the UCS-1-2, but honestly I think it's kind of unfair to compare it because it's not really built to the same scale and trying to achieve the same thing. But when it comes to these four, they've all been built to minifigure play scale. Of course, we have the 2002 Attack of the Clones, the very first one, then the 2008 Clone Wars version, the 2013 Episode 2 Revisit, and we have the 2023 Coruscant Guard gunship. While it's technically a slightly different gunship, it's trying to achieve the same thing, so I think it's fair to count it here. Now, when I was a kid, I only had the 2008 growing up. I got the 2013 later in life. Of course, I just got the 2020 as it came out, and I always wanted the 2002 as a kid, but I didn't get it until after college. So the only one I really have nostalgia for is the 2008, since it's the only one I had when I was a kid. That being said, let's take a look at each one individually and see how they rank up. To start things off, we have the 2002 Republic gunship, which came out with Attack of the Clones. Pretty cool we got this set as we were finding out what a Republic gunship even is. Anyways, we had just under 700 pieces for this set, and it retailed for $90, which is insane because this technically has the lowest piece count of any gunship, but it's right in scale as far as size with the next two, which both had over a thousand pieces. So it's really impressive what this vintage gunship was able to bring to the table. This came out technically before the 2003 Cloud City set, which is a cool set, but isn't really all that robust when it comes to the design. Speaking of the design of this, we have two pods up front where you could fit minifigures in. It didn't come with clone pilots back then, it just came with regular clones, and you actually only got three with this set, so you could put two clones in here, but you would really need to army build to get clones in the side gunner pocket as well as in the wing, but the difficulty here is the wing bubble covers, but there's just an empty hole there, so nowhere to put a minifigure. That wouldn't be developed until the 2008 one. That being said, if we look at the stickers, we've got a big sticker on the wing here, and we've got stickers on the side as well, and it's exceptionally hard to find this set with stickers that aren't peeling. I guess whatever the type of sticker they used back in 2002 really is not held up well, and you can see it starting to crack and peel, and like I said, it's hard to find these that have mint stickers, if they even exist. As far as the side goes, the doors do open back, but they don't close up the entire front. Kind of interesting. This is the only gunship that uh, lacks that feature. Of course, we can move the little gunner bubble out on that Technic hinge that's right there. And there's a lot of space on the inside to hold extra troops as well as guns, a little computer system and all that. On the back, we do have this gun that has a little bit of movement, but not a ton. We've got a nice printed piece up top here, and we also have a handle, but the handle really doesn't hold the weight very well. You can see it just comes right out and lifts that piece off, so that's always been an issue, and unfortunately, I just think that that was poor planning on LEGO's part. You can open up this flap in the back, but you're not really supposed to. That does give you a little bit more mobility with the gun, though. As far as the cannons up top, these look really nice as well, and again, you kind of have to give it a pass for the era that it came from, but for the era, it's pretty cool. We've got these little containers here on the side where you could store some extra things. And I've never been able to decide if this was really put here just to like hold stuff or if it was just a convenient way to take up space. That being said, when we move up to the front, once again, we do have these pods where you could put the minifigures and then the entire front part opens up if you lift this. You lift this and then the front opens and you can see that that's not very movie accurate per se. And we have a magnet piece here, which is something Lego really liked to do a lot in this era. That magnet piece holds this little canister and inside there's like a little tool bench as well as a computer system. But I always like the idea that this could be like a prisoner cell too, because you could make a minifigure sit in there. And then of course it all goes back in together a little something like this. Our minifigure selection for the 2002 was pretty great as well. As mentioned, we did get those three clone troopers. We also got two exclusive light blue super battle droids, which unfortunately over the years have become very prone to breaking and cracking. We also got a destroyer droid as well as the legendary Jedi Bob, who's worth over $100 now, which is pretty wild, but he is a Lego legend in the Star Wars world. Now we're at the 2008 Clone Wars gunship, probably the most drastic jump in scale and quality between the gunships as we go through the comparison. And this one again came out in 2008. It retailed for $120 and had 1,034 pieces. Now this one is definitely more to scale than the last 
one, and it's just a little bit bulkier and beefier. Some of the better play features, of course, are the accurate doors that open on the front and the back as far as the sides are concerned. We do have a little gun station here. There would have been a speeder that went in there. You'll see a picture here. Unfortunately, that's been lost to the sands of time in my collection, but up top, kind of like the last one, we have some really nice storage bins up here for guns or ammunition or whatever the case may be. And then this one was also customizable. You can see you've got this salacious crumb bomb sticker here, but there was also this sticker referencing like the World War II bombshell paintings. So that was pretty fun too. Of course, you can open that up. And inside we actually have a mobile command post that pops out. So you can see that this computer will just flip up and then there are seats there for your clone troopers and all of that. Speaking of clone troopers, now would be a good time to tell you about the minifigs that came in this. We got Commander Cody, Plo Koon, Asajj Ventress, Obi-Wan, and some regular clones to go with it. Definitely a very, very cool set of minifigures. Back on the side, we could open up this panel. You just kind of lift it up like this and you could slide out this medical tank. I really like this as a kid because, you know, your clone trooper or Jedi could get hurt in battle and then you had a way to revive them or at least get them healed until they could get back to the Jedi temple or whatever the case may be. As always, we have pods, but this time they're on hinges rather than having to take the entire piece out. We do have some stickers up front. They kind of show the computing for the pilots there. This didn't actually come with any traditional pilots per se, but a big upgrade are on the wings. Last time there was just a hole here. Now there is a spot that you could fit minifigs. And of course that was the same on both sides. Over the years, between 2002 to 2008, Lego introduced flick fire pieces. So we have all kinds of flick fire missiles up top. Just like the last one, you could open up this section. There would have been a little gun back here that could pivot, but I guess that's been lost to the sands of time too. One of the play features for the doors is that you have these hinges that you can push back to open the doors so you don't have to open them manually, although you can, but it's nice that you know, you've know you got this little play feature and this is not the last time that that play feature will be implemented on a gunship going forward. The cannons up top are really nice. They use a lot of Technic to get that built and all of these big cylinder pieces look really really great as well and of course I love that now like I said a lot of people are gonna say that this is one of the better gunships from over the years I mean you've got so much going on it's definitely super accurate but I wonder how much of that is clouded in nostalgia you know I have a lot of nostalgia for this set myself but I do think that the next one we're about to look at does kind of take the cake for the best one yet all right, now we're to what a lot of people will consider the GOAT, and that is the 2013 version. Now, why this one is so great, let's start with the minifigures to change things up. You got a lot of great minifigures, several of which ended up being exclusive. Not only did you get the red clone, but you got clone pilots for the first time with a gunship. You also got episode two, Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Padme, which is pretty insane to get all those main characters in one set. And overall, that just made this a totally desirable set as the years have gone by. Now, as far as the scale, I do think that this one gets the best contouring. It also has just the best play features as far as like the bubble on the wing. That's really cool. We've got the bubbles that come out of the sides. We did see this on the 2002, but this time they're more accurate with the way that they move and the way that they go into the body. Of course, we do sacrifice that door on the front that opens and closes for the bubbles, but I guess you can't always get what you want and have it all. But at the same time, we've got an open area here, which is really nice. We've also got doors on the front that open and inside there we have this little cart that comes out with some additional flick fire missiles that go on. Admittedly, I imagine there were some that go in the center too, but I'm not really sure what went there. I got this second hand, so I didn't have the pleasure of building it first myself. We do have these guns that pivot up front, just like the last version from 2008. We do have bubbles that open again on hinges. And of course we do have some little stickers here for computer details. That's nice. Once again, we have these canisters up top that open and can hold things. And then when we get to the back, remember I said that feature hasn't gone away, we can click this and move the doors back to reveal lots of space on the inside. But another thing that's hidden on the inside this time around is actually a speeder bike. Now I do have this speeder bike, this opens down. You can see that that comes out of there and the little grooves hold it in place. So you can really swoosh this thing around without losing the speeder bike. Okay, so on the back, we've got a pivot gun right here and the cannons look great on this. They're pretty similar to the 2008 in the use of all the Technic pieces and things like that to put them together. And 
the center, we have all these flick fire studs, but this one introduces the handle. Now, a lot of larger Star Wars ships have swooshing handles like this, which I think comes in a lot of handy for playing. Again, these are kids' toys, right? So play should be pretty high up on the spectrum of what we're looking for, but it does hide in there pretty nice, and I like that a lot. Over on the sides of the wings, you can see we have these big, large stickers. Those are on both sides, but all of the pods, like the big domes and things like that, all of those are printed, which is really nice. Underneath there, we have some computer systems and a seating area to put some clones. So if you were to army build, it's really cool that you can fill this one out. Again, I like this gunship a lot. A lot of people would agree that this is probably the best one of the minifigure scale gunships. And until LEGO does it better, I'm gonna give this one my vote for sure. And finally, we have the most recent gunship, the 2023 Coruscant Guard gunship. This is the smallest one and the most expensive at $140 in the year 2023. As far as minifigures go, we get Chancellor Palpatine, Clone Wars Padme, two shock troopers, and Commander Fox. And at the time of this video, all of those minifigures are exclusive. Now, perhaps the biggest bummer, of course, is the fact that this is $140 with 1,083 pieces. So the piece count is about the same as previous gunships but it's significantly smaller and it does lack some details now we do have the twisty guns up front but on the side wings here we actually have stud shooters instead of a bubble now we do have to remember this is a slightly different gunship classification by star wars terms so it's not exactly the same thing being represented as the other ones but you know for all intents and purposes it really should be just about the same up front, we do have two pods where we could put clones. It doesn't come with pilots though, so you just have to put the clones that come with it. We could open up these wings to see some area in here where you can put things, but it's really hard to access and it's not actually tall enough to fit a minifigure in there comfortably without having to like bend and contort your hand to get in there. So that definitely loses some points. The doors do open, but they all move in one big piece instead of two separate pieces like we've seen. And the doors don't open far enough back to be able to access a lot of that back area pretty freely. That being said, there is a lot of open space here that you can fit minifigs inside, so that is pretty nice as well. Instead of having canisters up in this area where we have on all previous gunships, now we get a little door back here, which of course can hold some cool stuff, just like the other gunships, it's just in a different place. The gun in the back is the smallest one yet, and the back does open, so you can access you know, the interior from here a little bit, but not all that great. The top actually uses a more brick built technique than Technic pieces as we've seen on all the previous gunships. So, you know, for somebody like me that prefers brick built over Technic whenever possible, I do like that. And this is our second gunship that has a swooshing handle so you can fly it around and that's really nice. I like this gunship a lot, but it's kind of an anomaly for me, right? I like it a lot, but it is the highest priced one and the smallest one, and the details, like, you know, the wings and things like that, are the most off of any gunship. So it's very odd to me that I like this as much as I do, despite the fact that it's probably the weakest one of them all. That being said, I don't think that any of the gunships are particularly bad, it's just some of them do things better than others. But anyways, let's zoom out and I'll give you my final thoughts on this showcase comparison video, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I know a lot of people have also wanted to see the size difference, and honestly, I don't think it shows up on camera as well as it needs to, so I'm going to show you them like this backwards so that you can see the size difference. I think that's the best way to actually show it. Obviously, the 2023 one is much smaller than the 2013 one, but like I said, it is a little strange when you see them side by side on camera. I don't think that the camera gets the scale quite right as it is in person, but there it is from a couple of different angles just so you can really see the size difference. All right, guys, let me know which gunship you think is the best. I think it's tough not to go with the 2013 for movie accuracy, but there is something about that 2008 one that has a lot of magic to it. Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Be sure to hit like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.